Luke 1. Last week, we, uh, Mary went down to see Elizabeth. Um, you know, she heard Elizabeth was, was uh, also uh, pregnant. And, um, and Mary's first thing was to look at science. And she said, uh, you know, uh, how is this going to happen since I know no man? And, uh, and she told her. And, and then she said to her, you know, your cousin too. So Mary went down there. Why? She wants to see it. She wants to see it. This is a special child they're going to have here. And she wanted to see these things. And, uh, and so she stayed down there. And, um, and, and there was a, a good communion there. Uh, the babe leaped in her, in her belly, uh, in, in Elizabeth's belly. And, and uh, just, just a beautiful situation. She stayed there with her for uh, three months. And here we are now in verse number 56. Um, and uh, remember Zacharias, he, he can't speak. Remember that. He can't speak, remember? Uh -huh. He's got to do it nine months. He's not going to speak for nine months. Right. That's a long time. Nine months. I couldn't do a day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking nine months now. I better pray. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he's been he's been uh, he's been playing um, mimes and charades for nine months now, talking to people, doing sign language, basically. Uh, you know, and probably doesn't know any sign language, so basically he's doing calisthenics. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, he's keeping his heart right. You know, keeping it going. Yeah. Amen. So let's start in 56, and it says, And Mary abode with her three months. Three months and returned to her own house. Three months. That would put, uh, that would put Elizabeth in, uh, what? Um, she'd be coming to her ninth month, yeah. basically. Right. You know? She'd be coming to her ninth month. Uh, and uh, whatever, well, and it says then uh, uh, Mary abode with her three months and returned to her own house. Uh, she's there three months, so guess what's happening when she comes home? She's a showing. Yeah. <laughs> she, you may have went down there to see, um, you know, to see the the great scene. You know, an older woman having a child uh, is pregnant, and that's a big sight. That's she went down there. She went to also Elizabeth, and what did she do? She went down there. She didn't even call Joseph first. She went down there. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so, verse number 57. Now, Elizabeth's full-time uh, Elizabeth's full time came uh, that, she should, that she should be delivered and brought forth a son, and her neighbors and her uh, cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy unto her, and they rejoiced with her, and it came to pass on the eighth day. They came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And, and they said unto her, there, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they, they made signs to uh, his father how he, would have, how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all, and his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Uh, Father, bless, bless this time, and, and, and bless, our, bless my mouth, Lord, that I may say the things rightly fitted for you. Uh, thank you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so uh, she let, she goes three months. She's coming home, and then uh, it it leaves Mary now and goes right into Elizabeth. We're going to deal with uh, Elizabeth's time. She came to her full term. She's now ready to deliver. Uh, you know, she's she's got the woes of of, uh, of pregnancy here. You know, the uh, can't move around. Wants her feet rubbed, stuff like that. You know, I had to go through it. Amen. <laughs> 
And uh, so now she's ready, and, and you know, the usual happens. Watch out, your neighbors get together. This is a good community back then. Uh, we used to have them type of communities and stuff where people worry, hey, you know, what's your name's having a baby, and everybody wants to come out and find out the day of, yeah. okay? You know, when you got sick, people actually came down and, and, and brought food and everything else in yes. the community. And when you got uh, hurt, like, people took care of you. They came over, cut your grass and stuff like that. We don't got that anymore. What happened? You lost the community. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is you lost communication. That's why. Lost the word. Amen. We have nothing to commune for. Everybody on Sunday used to go to church. There was something to commune about. Mm -hmm. Now everybody doesn't do anything. They just sit home in their pajamas, then go to Dollar General. Amen. I know. I got. What do you think? I didn't send it out of uh, the blue. I go down there. I see it all the time. I'm like, what is this? This is dress code for this place. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and and her neighbors, they wanted to come down and and see, you know, and they want to see the. This is exciting. An old lady here, a lady that's older, that's past her years. She's yeah. having a baby. I got to tell you something. I, I want to be down. I want to see this happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's something you got to understand. Now everything's going around. What's that? That, that his father saw a vision. The father saw a vision, man, down at the tabernacle. You know that gets around. Hey, he saw a vision. Yeah, yeah. No, something special vision. about this child. No, right. Yeah, people are coming around. You know something, something special here. Okay, and, and the neighbors want to come out and see. Maybe you got to understand something. They're still search. They are searching for a Messiah. There are people searching. You know, until today they look at those things. And, and it says in um, how, that, how the Lord had shown great mercy, it says in 58. Great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced out with her. Isn't that the days, you know? They rejoiced with people back then. Mourn with people. Cry with people. Not just, uh, you know, oh, okay, you'll be better. You know, uh, all things work for good. Those who love God. You know, the usual. No, no, no tenderness, no comfort. Miserable comforters are today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 59, it came to pass on the eighth day. Eighth day. The new beginnings, the eighth day. Uh, seven and then the eighth day. New beginnings. What, what happens on the eighth day? Children get circumcised. So they, they start this event. This is a big event for these people. And uh, they come down the eighth day. We know that that's the day. Uh, God knows what he's doing. That's the day when your antibodies in your body are at their highest. If you, uh, if you were to do this, like today they do it uh, right away, uh, you know, within the first few days, and they have to, they have to realize the doctors uh, have to worry about bleeding then. But if they do it the eighth day like God told them to do, they wouldn't have this problem. But you got to understand something. If you keep somebody in the hospital for eight days, uh, you know, you're going to have a problem. What's right. that? You know, it's called money. Yeah, money sure is. <laughs> <laughs> well, eight, eight days. They get, nowadays, it used to be it used to be a week, and then it went uh, down to three, three days, days uh, five days and three days, and you know, and now it's down to five hours or so. Get out. Yes. You know, plus leave leave a hundred bucks there for that tissue you just picked up. <laughs> yeah. Because that's exactly what it's come to today. It's like. It's like you get a hospital room and an accountant at the same time. He's on the bed next to you. All right. And he just accounts everything you do in there. So anyway, they, uh, they, they start calling him um, the uh, Zacharias. The Zacharias after his father, okay? The Zacharias after his father. And his mother answered and said, she right away jumps up. Not so, not so. She, had to, she knows. You know, that vision from the angel, she knows. And, and uh, she says, not so. He, he needs to be called John. And she's adamant about it. I mean, think of this. She just had a lot of energy pulled out of her, and she's still doing this. This is eight days later, and she's still, you know, ready to go. Hey, no, no, it's John. She's still working for the Lord. What's that? She was elected to bring forth a prophet, and now she's still working for the Lord. Right. And verse 61, and they said unto her, uh, there is none of thy kindred, nobody else. This is You're not following tradition. It's always been a tradition that you'll name him after Zacharias. Uh, just like today, we uh, I know with Greeks it was 
Um, we get named after, like, if I was a, if my father would have been a, a, a right family, uh, I would have been usually uh, named after my grandfather. And my middle name would be my dad's. And it switches back and forth with us. Okay? And uh, so, but that's, a, that's just a regular, that's a tradition that's uh, followed by some families, not really all families anymore. And he says, uh, so all of a sudden they, 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 they uh, and they made signs. They start having a family uh, uh, argument here, uh, a little bit of an argument here, uh, and making signs and trying to get this uh, agreement done, but they're arguing right now. And basically what they want is, look how they say it, and they made signs to his father how he would have him called. Uh, you know, like, don't you agree with us? That's how they're doing it. Zachariah, don't you agree with us? Uh, you never, you ever have that for family members? They, they don't like to counsel. They like to persuade. I, I don't know if you pick stuff up, but see, I listen, and, and, and you know, for years it's been uh, playing, you know, everything it seems to be today, it's not a, it's never a suggestion as much as it is a push to get you to do what they want you to do. Right. And what's weird is it's on little things. And people get upset because you won't do it for little things. Hey, what's your name that dog? Well, I named the dog Rusty. What did you name on this? Why? Well, you know, and you get in a stupid fight over a dumb over a dumb name for a dog. Yeah. You know, you want a name on that? Go buy your own dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so, but they're making signs to 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 get this to get them to agree. Don't you agree with us? And uh, and he asked for a, a writing table. And so he's going to, he writes down and he, and, and his name is John. Okay. And, and they marveled, uh, they marveled all, they marveled that, he, that when he wrote it down, why, why he would call it John? Well, the grace of God is John. That's the name. The grace of God. Joe, J-O, God, Jehovah, uh, and Han is grace, uh, jo uh, grace of God. And, and the, uh, they, they confirm, this, this confirms his faith by writing it down. He writes it down, he confirms his faith that he believes. And what happens when you believe? His tongue got loose. You see? He couldn't speak before, why? You can't speak on things you don't believe. Remember he said he didn't believe it. Yeah. Am I gonna, is this gonna happen to me? What are you, you're, come on, you just talk to God. You're in the, you've been working in the tabernacle, working for God, you don't even know? And he's a good man. Think about how it would be for us. And his, his, his tongue got loosed because of his belief when he started to believe. And, and you know what? Look what happens. It says his tongue was loosed and he spake. And what's the first thing he does? He praises God. Mm -hmm. He praises God when he does it. He has a full healing here of his tongue right here. And the first thing he does when he gets his speech, he doesn't turn around and go, oh boy, that's God, God, finally. No, he turns around and praises God. He praises God. Go to, uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You see, when they did that, I bet you everybody else marveled. Why? Well, think about it. Now all of a sudden he's speaking. He wasn't speaking. Everybody hears that maybe there's something special about this child, and and then all of a sudden he's loose. His his tongue loosens up. He just starts speaking right like that. You'll notice it didn't say that he had to like go through therapy or anything. He just went right for it. today. They, oh, you got six weeks of therapy or something like that. Unless your uh, medical plan uh, doesn't give you six weeks and only gives you two, then you're healed in two. <laughs> Oh, it's just like going to going to you go to the hospital. Uh, you got uh, pancreatic cancer or something like that in the fourth stage. Guy turns around, tells you you got sixty days to live. You can't pay the bill. He gives you another sixty. <laughs> These days, <laughs> Amen. First Corinthians chapter one. Look down at verse number twenty-two and see. Here's the thing: the for the Jews require a what? A sign. What he gets? He got this. He got this. They got the signs of tongues. They got the sign of a tongue. Okay. Now, what are you saying? Well, that's the real sign there. For sure. there's a real sign of a tongue. Uh, you know. Right there, he started speaking. There's a real sign, and uh, 
once his tongue was loosened up and they had a full healing uh, looking back at Luke uh, 1 and verse 65 and what happens then well the sign came in and what happens and, and fear came upon all that dwelt round about them they started hearing it and look and all these sayings were what they're noised throughout all the hill country of Judea people started talking hey man there was a sign why well Something big's happened. The Lord's back. The Lord's starting to speak again to us. It's been years yeah. since Malachi, and now all of a sudden things are now happening again? Yeah, it needs to get out there. It needs to get out there, people. The Lord's back. We're starting, He's starting to talk to us again. We better get our act together now. Mm -hmm. uh, at verse 66, And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what manner, look, what manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was uh, with him. What manner of child shall this be? Go to Mark chapter uh, 11. Mark chapter 11. In Mark chapter 11, uh, look down to, to verse, um, look at verse number uh, 30, 31. Okay, verse 30. Uh, he's talking, Jesus is talking to the uh, uh, Pharisees and stuff. They were asking him by what authority he does these things in verse 28. And, and Jesus tells him, I will answer you a question. You tell me these things. And he says, the baptism of John in verse 30. Was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves. Why is that? If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? Verse 32. But if we say of man, which they wanted to say, they feared the people. Why is that? For all men counted John that he was a what? Prophet indeed. Why? Well, a prophet indeed. They were positive about it when it says that. And it says all the people in, in uh, Matthew, when it comes to the same verse, it, it puts all the people. They, they thought he was a prophet. Why? Because of this birth. Uh, an older woman that was barren, all of a sudden she has a baby. Well, who had that? Sarah? Remember Sarah? Uh, remember uh, Samson's mom? They, they were older. Okay? And then they had children. And both of them had basically prophets. Isaac, the patriarch, and then also uh, Samson. Hannah also was barren, and she had a baby, and, and that was Samuel. And these were prophets. Something special is happening in uh, Israel right here, and all saw him as a prophet now. Why a special birth? Right. And they have a sign now. The sign of that father's tongue that opened up. They got everything to go with now. There's something special about this child. Uh, verse number 67. And his father, Zacharias, he, he was filled, was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he and he prophesied. He started to preach here. Uh, go to uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. He starts to open his mouth. He's going to sing. He's going to prophesy and preach in his singing. And, and the Lord brings this out. He, he says in 2 uh, in uh, Peter uh, chapter 1, he says... Um, Verse number 13, Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle in his body uh, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Okay, go down to uh, uh, verse number 16. He says, for, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty for 
He received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came a such a voice to him from the excellent glory, uh, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is a matter of transfiguration, right? We all understand. And they heard that. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where? In your hand. Whereunto you do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts and starts to get fervent in your heart. And he says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. You don't make up, well, I can do it my dad, make up my own mind. I got I just think. That's not gonna work with the Lord. Okay? Who cares what you think? Let's hear what the book says. Amen. Now look what he says. It's not a private interpretation. Why is this? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Man didn't have anything to do with it. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that's how it works, people. Still works today, too. Just not visions. It's by this book. Go back to Luke, and I'll show you what that was. See? He says that in verse 67... His father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke as the Holy Ghost moved them. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. And what does it say? And he prophesied. So he, he's that verse. Holy men of old. Okay? And what's he going to do? Well, what does prophesying do? It works to edify. It, it works to exhort. It works to comfort somebody. That's what problem. That's what preaching, real preaching, is. It's not to. It's not to sensationalize everything. It's not to get you all emotional and everything. It's made to give you the truth and to co comfort you with the truth. I mean, let's let me give you some truth here. When you die, you're going to heaven if you're saved. You're saved. Yeah. He says you know this. You know how you know it because your sins are forgiven. That, that's how you know it. That you're saved really is that your sins are forgiven. That's the one thing I've noticed that when I talk to people, I say, "Well, you, well, did you did you did you get your sins forgiven?" And they're saying, "Well, I pray to get my sins forgiven." I'm like, "Well, why are you so doubting? Because you already knew that part. Now, how can you go to hell if your sins are forgiven?" Yeah, That's crazy, crazy preachers, man, <laughs> Just preaching stupid stuff. Amen. Well. Uh, he starts a song here, and uh, he's going he's gonna to speak uh, to the heart uh, and the soul and the mind of, of the people. And, and he says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Why is that? For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Hey, what's up, man? You see, he says, blessed. Uh, you're blessed is what? Blessed be God. Okay? Blessed be God. First things first. Let's thank God. How are you going to bless God? Thanking Him. Do you realize that? That's the only thing you can do? What are you going to do? Give Him money? No. You know, give Him a brand new car. I ain't going to thank Him. No. Right? So what? the only thing that can bless the Lord is you thanking Him. How else can you bless, bless the Lord? Is by thanking Him. You can't give anything else to Him. And that's where it basically, you, know, you ever notice that's what the Lord's looking for? He's looking for your heart, not your not your what your substance. And, and and he looks and he says, uh, he says, Blessed, blessed be the Lord God. And, and the hand of the Lord here is going to show the blessings of the Lord. And, and and for he hath. Now notice this about this. Watch this. God is, is incredible in his writing. Watch how he puts the English. Blessed be the Lord God, right? Of Israel. Now watch this. For he hath. What's that? Visited. That's past tense. And what? Redeemed. Past tense. His people. He hadn't even pulled them out of there yet. Look at the foreknowledge of God right there. He hath redeemed his people. Verse 69. And hath raised up an horn of salvation. A horn is the strength. The strength of salvation for us in the house of uh, his servant David. Uh, hath, what? Past tense. 
That's how God writes prophecy, like it's already happened. Why? Because once he puts it down in stone, that's it. It's going to happen. It, it, it's a tough day when God turns around you and says, this is going to happen, and you didn't want it to happen. <laughs> Seriously. Right. I mean, imagine you come along and God turns around and tells you, he says, uh, guess what? Uh, you're going to do this. And you're like, no, I'm not. Well, what he just said you're going to. <laughs> Is he a man that he should lie? There's a problem we have. Then we fight him, and then it takes like six years to do that 10-minute task or, or a half hour, even a year test. It takes us 10 years after we've been slammed against the wall 60 times, and then we turn around and say, okay, Lord, I'll listen now. <laughs> We're all crippled up, man. Yeah. But that's man. It's man. Uh -huh. we got to be honest. We laugh about it, but we're, we're honest about it. What's that? We're a bunch of knuckleheads, man, that don't know how to listen. Yes. Amen. you you got, you got to realize you're only going to get that in a church like this. Why? Because we are knuckleheads, and we know. You go to other churches, they're, they're too. They can't say them things. It's like, oh, I don't deserve hell. I'm so good. I'm like, here and come into this place, everybody's like, yeah, I deserve to be burned, everything. <sighs> Push me down further. <laughs> Amen. Let's go over to verse number uh, 70. And, and he spake, he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, he says, which have been, been since the world uh, began. They've been saying this for years. That's what he's trying to say. Look, th this stuff is not hard. Look how he says, he says, and as he spake by, he says, look, the, the horn of salvation, as he spake by those holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Adam was talking about it. Uh, remember in the garden, Adam, he brought it up to Adam. So Adam's been talking about it. Uh, Noah's been talking about it. Abraham's been talking about it. Going down the line, every seer down the line, they've been speaking about this. Uh, and now it's here. And uh, they've been doing it for years. Verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that what? Hate us. I, I want you to understand. You see that second part? Yeah. You can put religion next to that. Because it's religion that hates you. I'm just not talking about the religion of the Roman Catholic, the religion of, uh, you know, uh, all around. I'm talking all religions hate you. You know, even the religions that are all about music and, and, and crying and all that emotional stuff. That makes everybody crazy after a while and it makes Christians go back into the world faster than it does anything else. Come over here and do some magic tricks. La, 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 la. <laughs> that's the best you got? I sat there looking at him and said, well, that's the best you got? All this time, how, how many years have you been a Christian? 20 years and you came up with body, la, 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 that's the best? Yeah. Man. I know, it's gotten that bad. It's so silly. I mean, people got so silly. That's the best they came up with. All right. Um, but from the hand of all that hate us, that re religion is going to be the, the biggest problem. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember what? His holy covenant that happened years ago. The oath, that promise, that faith, which... He sware to our father, Abraham, that promise of faith he gave, he gave out to Abraham. He was going to have a land. He was going to multiply his seed in three different ways. And he, as the dust of the earth, that's his extended seed of, of, of kids. Keturah had more kids. Ishmael had, was, one of them, was one of the kids he had from Hagar. And then Keturah, his concubine, had, he had more children with her, the Midianites, and all came out of them. And then, of course, Isaac. Of course, Isaac in there. And uh, he said, I would, and, and Isaac, of course, is the sand of the sea. And then uh, after that, it's the stars of heaven. Guess what? They're spiritual. They're, they're you. You're, you, get, you got grafted in on that one. What's that? Well, you're the spiritual seed. You're not physical. You're not a, you're not a physical Jew. Uh, but guess what? Uh, God grafted you into, into the uh, commonwealth of Israel. Uh, not physically but spiritually, in the church, though. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 
So uh, uh, let's go over real fast to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. He remembered his covenant with his people. Psalm 105. And look down at verse number 6. It says, O ye seed of Abraham, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He, he hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And then he tells you what they are. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And there's where he's talking about it. About the oath and the covenant. Which he swore uh, to our father Abraham. Verse 74 back in Luke. He says that he would grant unto us. That we being delivered out of, out of the hand of our enemies might serve him with fear in holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life and that's where he gives you the how how are you going to serve him? you're going to uh, that you might serve with what without fear i want you to be able to stand and stand up to people in holiness and righteousness you see god holiness isn't the way to god what's first god is first and then that's the way to holiness Without God, you ain't getting there. See, there's the problem we have in our society uh, of Christ, of the church. We think we can get holy and then we get God. You can't do it. You can't do these things. You've you got to be cleaned up by God. Okay? You've got to be in the Lord first. Uh, it, the Lord is not going to accept your righteousness. He's going to accept. It's only Him. Amen? And... Uh, verse number 76, he, he talks, and thou child, he talks to the child. And thou child, he's talking to a child right here. And he says, and, and thou child, that child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. The, you know what, notice the choice of words. He didn't say the prophet of the Lord there. He said of the highest. Why? Well, remember in Daniel, they used what? The most high God, the highest. Uh, Melchizedek, the highest. What's that? He's the God for all in that. Not just the Jews right there. Now the Jews were looking at it like, that's our Messiah, he's ours. Why wouldn't you be like that? Of course. That's what you read all your life. He's ours. But as far as he, he's for everybody. He was going to use Israel to go out and bring everybody in. But they wouldn't. But his full intention from Melchizedek he, he used it in Hebrews to tell you what, I'm the God of all. Everybody that's out there. Mixed multitudes followed out of Egypt, you know. There was mixed multitudes. What's that? That's you. I want to get in on this. That's you. There's other people in the Bible. They came a-looking. Uh, we should see Jesus, the Greeks said in John. What's that? I want to see him too. And he says, verse, he shall be the prophet of the highest. Why is that? For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Uh, that's what he's looking for. What? I need this, kid, this child right there. I'm calling him to do what? Go the way before uh, the Messiah, the Lord that's coming, and do what? Prepare the way. You don't realize this, but you're preparing the way right now to the rapture. Every one of you. We're, what's the next thing on the list? The rapture. We're preparing for the rapture. We're preparing. What's that? We've got to get some more people in this boat. There, it, this boat isn't filled up yet, people. Right. There's more people out there that need to come. That, uh, that ark that Noah had, the whole top floor, if you do the math, the whole top floor is, uh, is empty. What's that for, people? They didn't come. That's what you have to understand about the Lord. They, there's a third row. What's that? That's for people. That's what the intention was, to get people into that ark. What do you think he's out there preaching? Hey, it's going to rain, tough luck. 
It's going to rain. It's going to flood. Do what? Get in the boat. You want safety? Get in the boat. Well, why would I get in that boat? God's in the boat. I don't want to get in there. That's exactly what society says. I don't want to get in that boat. Why? God's in there. I don't want this book. Give me another one. Give me one of them goofy ones they sell down at the uh, uh, Walmart, that, the, any, any version, whatever. Why give me one of them? So I don't have him in the book. That's why. Verse number uh, 77, to give knowledge to what? Of salvation unto his people. By what? The remission of sins. And I just told you that's how you know you're saved. He says it right there. He says it, he says what? You know you're saved because your sins are forgiven. More than anything, that is the biggest part. Why? That's the reason you basically you receive Christ because you can't get in with sin and you want that washed away. That's what happens when you come to Christ. That is the benefit. What's that? Your sins are washed away. And he says, he says, uh, by the remission of, of sins, through the tender mercy of, of, of our God, whereby the day spring from on high, uh, heaven from on high, from heaven, hath visited us. God from heaven, he visited us. And what's he going to do? He's going to give light, the day spring. That's the morning star right there. Okay, the morning star is a different star. It's just, you know, the day, spring, and all that. We think it to be the sun that gets up in the morning. There's an actual star before that. It, 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 goes, it goes down just before the morning starts. It's the morning star. And, and it doesn't reach the horizon. What's that? That's you. You're going up with the uh, morning star. That's where we're going. We're going up. We're going up with him, and then they'll deal with that next star. What's that? When that sun hits, and it's the day of the Lord, man. The Son of Righteousness comes in, Amen. And uh, verse number, verse number uh, seventy-eight, the day spring. And what else is it going to do? It to give light to them that sit in darkness. That's a spiritual light. A spiritual light. To them that sit in darkness, to those that don't know. And in and in the shadow of death, uh, those that are there to guide our feet into the way of peace. Peace what? Peace with God. That's the only peace you're gonna have. What do you think you're gonna have peace with man? Why don't you try that one right now? Go ahead, try and have peace with man. See how that works. I, I've been hearing that for years. Peace on earth, goodwill to man, peace on earth. Uh, sorry, you forgot the verse. It says, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill to man. What's that mean? No glory to God, no peace on earth, and we haven't had peace yet. Right. We got a mess going on. Our government isn't even telling us what's going on. We got World War III banging at our door. Our government's sitting there saying nothing, and we're the ones starting it. At least tell us if you're going to pick a fight. We'd like to know. And if anybody wants to know how we're picking the fight, we broke, we, we, we exploded the Nord Stream pipeline and got caught. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And we have a president that's lying and telling people that if just a, a, a concerned party mm -hmm. blew, up the, uh, blew up that pipeline. Yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? It was, it was personally, uh, the order was given, and Cy Hirsch said it, the, the order was given by Joe Biden. They know it, just so you know. It's not, it, this is not something that's conspiracy theories. Uh, they're already, they're, they've already have all the stuff overseas, and they have all the evidence, yep. and they know it's him. They know it is. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna, what we're doing right now is we're going to keep giving money and troops and equipment and everything else to Ukraine so that we can lose, what, 1,000 people a day as they're losing? They're done, people. They've lost over 200,000 people. Bakhmut just went down two days ago, and uh, we're still sitting there saying, none of this has happened. Uh, they're already lost. This is a joke now. Yeah. And now, uh, now we're getting threatened. This is getting to be stupid. Why doesn't he just tell the truth? And we could, we get, a, we just need a better president. We need better people in places. We got to get rid of our whole Secretary of Defense and all them. They're a bunch of traitors and everything else with it. 
Don't worry, I'm already thrown off of uh, YouTube. I don't care what they think. I never did. And these, and we, all our people are just driving around like nothing's happening. <laughs> what a mess. The only thing that we would want, we want, we would love to have Ukraine as a parking lot for us to like use as an aircraft carrier. That's about it. We're killing people, and we're acting like we're the heroes. You know, that's getting. And there is China sitting over there now, calling for peace. We were usually the ones calling for peace. Now, who's calling for peace now? The other side. Why is that? Because we're the destructive animal. NATO, and we're using it under the guise of NATO. Amen. I helped you out for the day, didn't I? I got a few minutes. Let me get done this chapter. I just put that in, helping you out. Okay. Uh, just so you know, probably within a year and a half, uh, this is not going to be here. Why? We're getting out of here, people. <laughs> you can't see this? I'll give you another one. Anybody here ever hear of signs from heaven? You want a sign from heaven that's actually pretty good? Remember back in 2017, something happened in this area? Uh, 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 an eclipse went over across the United States horizontally. Do you remember that? Oh, no, it went over vertically. I'm sorry. It came down vertically from, north to, from, from wherever. Uh, and it came down and crossed the United States, went straight down near the Mississippi River. Well, guess what? April 8th in 2024, another eclipse is going to happen. It's going to go across like this, and it's going to go. Uh, it's going to hit us actually. But where it's going to cross is in Arkansas, right there. It's uh, it's the actual intersection from 2017. X marks the spot. We're under judgment. You want to sign from heaven? There you go. We're going down real fast after that. You better be saved. How do you know? I don't know. I'm just smart enough to go. God doesn't make those things and just walk away. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything is done for a reason. Right. He knows exactly what that you, you think God's gonna not judge a sodomite nation like this? You got these weirdos walking around with all different color hair thinking they're we don't even know who they are. I don't know, don't call me a girl, don't call me a guy. What am I supposed to call you, an idiot? Just because they don't know who they are, what they are, and who they are, doesn't mean I don't know what they are. I've been around farms long enough and pets. I just lift up their leg. <laughs> I'm not stupid. Hey, look, preachers are afraid to say these things. Put it in their face, man. I don't want these people around my kids. They they, they ruin people. Right, they do. They want to take kids down from school and get them changes in their genders and mutilate them and everything else. Is this sick? That's the world. That's the world we live in. Amen. Isn't that great? Help you out today, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> verse in the last verse in verse 80, what happened? A child grew, of course. The child grew. And what? He waxed strong where? Where it counts. In the spirit. His parents are teaching. He got a priest as the father. He was a good priest, not one of those guys trying to get political power. Well, I wear a dress on Sunday, so everybody will call me father out on the street, and I can get a little control with the mayor. Maybe I'll get a ticket fixed by the cop. That's about all they get. Mm -hmm. And the child grew. He waxed strong. Where? In his spirit. He was in, and lots, it says he was in deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Who was in deserts? What's that? Well, when you're alone, it's easier to get with God. It's the backsliders. When they, when they get right with God, they're not with a bunch of people. They're alone. Why? Because they're wallowing in their sorrows when it happens. Amen? Just like you. Just like you. Don't think you're better than anybody. You, you did it too. When you were backslidden and you got driven down, God, God, you notice that God waiting for you. He's just waiting for you. What's that? He's waiting for you to make a turn to him. The father came out to meet the son way out. Why is that? Because when you come, when you start to come back, and your heart gets gets uh, gets to that point where it says, "I want to come back," you know God has to help you. Why? Because you ever seen yourself when you did come back? You're a mess. You're down in the dumps and you're a mess, and God's trying to go, "Come on, come on," and pick you up a little. Why? Because you ain't got that spiritual strength. You just got back up. I should have preached this message in the afternoon. All right, so we'll stop right there. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to be here. 
Amen. Amen. All right, Father, we thank thee, Lord. We ask you to bless the next hour, uh, the preaching hour. We thank you. We love you. Uh, let's have a good time today in Jesus, in, in, in your precious and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who's on? Uh, Janice. Hi, Janice. Good morning, Janice. Was coming today, but fell and have, I guess that's stitched. Oh, in my forehead. Amen. We'll be praying for you, Janice. Love you. Hi, Courtney. <laughs>